yeah, my question is about, um, I'm feeling all the time lots of, if I'm feeling all the time a lot of negative things uh, like fear and loneliness and neediness and all these things which I'm feeling a lot, mm -hmm. um, why am I not, <laughs> if I'm feeling them, why am I not um, processing them? Yes, there's a big difference between processing them, experiencing them properly, isn't there, and feeling them. Yeah. Right. Yep. It's always pretty much the same answer, you know, we've got these layers <laughs> and uh, what you've got to do is look at what you get out of uh, it. We see this with most of our addictions, because what we've been talking about here are addictions. Um, and our addictions cover our fears and they cover our grief, right? So, so we, know, we know that that's the general theory, if you like. And then, of course, we revert to anger whenever they are not met. And if we want to suppress anger, we'll even go further and we'll cause ourselves depression. Where we suppress everything go into total denial of every emotion possible. Is that what's, happen is that what's happening to me? <laughs> well, no, what's happening... Because I what's feel quite depressed. You feel quite depressed, yeah, <laughs> you do. Okay. And yes, uh, what you're doing is you're trying to selectively process through emotions that you've, uh, whoops, that you've identified within yourself but not yet developed a willingness to feel. And then... Because you haven't got a willingness to feel it, you get quite down on yourself, right? And negative, and then start blaming yourself, and then that doesn't feel good either, so then you suppress those feelings, and eventually what you get out of that is depression, right? Or a general detunement from everything that's going on around. Now, of course, the only way to change this is to go back down the way it was created. So. So when we're at a state of depression, the only way to get out of that is to start feeling how angry we are. Does that make sense? Now, unfortunately, in today's society, that's not very much accepted that you need to go into that direction, right? And so this tells you that probably one of the addictions is probably wanting to get society's approval or general approval uh, rather than feel or express what you really feel with your anger. And I suppose the difficulty in living in close, close quarters, um, which I feel is something you live close by other people, like in the same house with other people. Where, how do you live at the moment? Um, I live with my mother and my uh, son, 17-month-old uh, son. Yeah. Who, who created most of your emotional injuries? Maybe my mother. Yeah. <laughs> and you're living with the very person who's created most of your emotional injuries. And if I get angry, she... she <laughs> yes. She does the same thing she's always done. She just makes me feel like I'm an awful person. Exactly. Exactly. The problem with living with the persons who created your emotional injuries is that they are going to continue to attempt to suppress your ability to deal with them. Yeah. Now, you're living with her for financial reasons? Yeah. <laughs> so you're making a compromise financially I, to, I of your soul. I only did it when my partner left because I, I needed some... because I've got a young son and I couldn't work anymore. I understand the process. <laughs> I understand what's going on. Um, my suggestion is to look at your willingness to compromise your own emotional well-being for the sake of... Uh, financial reasons. Yeah. Now, your mother has suppressed these kind of emotions inside of you all of your life. Anger. You, yeah. If I get ang angry, she, she, she just shuts me down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She wants to suppress your anger. Like I said, all of your life she's been doing this. If you live with her, it's highly unlikely you'll actually get through the emotion. Okay. And the reason why is because she is the person who created the suppression of the emotion in the first place. So it's highly unlikely she's going to let you deal with it now 
when she's been using all of her effort to suppress it in you for all of your life. The only way in which you're going to be feel free to address these particular emotions is by being outside of her control, outside of her will. But when you live in somebody's house, you have yeah. to concede to their will. That's yeah. the price you pay. Right? So, uh, and also know, I live there because I'm afraid of being lonely as well. You, yes, you've got other reasons why you live there, but the, to, frankly, it's far better to be lonely <laughs> than it is to live with a person who suppressed you for all of your life and continuing to suppress you. Yeah. Like I, I personally would much rather feel lonely than, than live with constant suppression. Yeah. yeah. So the thing is though that you're afraid of loneliness more than you're afraid of constant suppression. <laughs> right? And yeah. so you make the compromise. And you're afraid of uh, financial insecurity more than you're afraid of living in a of suppression the actual suppressive environment that you're living in and as a result you're making a choice it's a free will choice you're making to live in an oppressive environment that suppresses your emotion and the only way that you can live in that environment is by completely suppressing everything that you feel and then of course you're going to get depression yeah you see so if you were living in harmony with choices that were about love of you, love of yourself, you would, you would have to, at some point, either be able to express your emotion in your current environment, which is highly unlikely given the fact that it's not your environment, it's your mother's, <laughs> and, and also you would have to, at some point, probably as a result of that, leave your current environment and live somewhere else. But your other fears are affecting your decision to do such a thing. You know the environment you're living in is not conducive to your emotional well-being, but you're willing to pay the price of your own emotional well-being for other reasons. Yeah. Does that make sense? And I would recommend to you that you stop doing that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because if you continue doing that, you're going to find the complete suppression of your emotion will result in some major depression. And, uh, and then, of course, doctors will want to put you on medication and all those kind of things. This is not going to be good for you or your child. And uh, it's also not good for your child to grow up in an environment, in a house where you have already felt suppressed because yeah. your child is also going to feel suppressed. Yeah. So I feel you need to make some decisions. Okay. And, <laughs> and can I point out a few things about decisions? I'm very when, bad at them. <laughs> when we make decisions that are harmonious with love, mm -hmm. right? So if we make, so we're faced with decisions, and our decisions are harmonious with love and truth. Right? All of God's laws work for us in that place. So you can find a location where you can afford to live. You can find a job which will suit exactly what you need for bringing up your child. All of these things are possible, right? But only if you live in harmony with love and truth. Live in harmony with love of yourself, love of your neighbour, love of truth. And these things will be found. But you don't have any faith in that at the moment. You don't believe that yet. Right? And this is why you're willing to compromise. So I would pray to God about getting some faith. So what you need is some faith. That if you live in harmony with love and truth, everything will be better than what it currently is. And you'll be able to attract a location where you can live safely and with some security without having to have your mother in your life every day suppressing your emotions. Yeah. Does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Most of us lack this faith. We, we don't believe God's got our best interests at heart, right? And that God can organize the universe for us in any way. But that's not true. God, God built the whole universe. Of course, it's all organized by God. But that's all organized based on principles of love and truth. So we have to bring ourselves into harmony with love in order for the change to occur. While you're willing to sacrifice the love of yourself, you are not in harmony with how God views you. 
God loves you and does not want you to sacrifice love of yourself. Does that make sense? So God wants you to honour yourself and to stop putting up with mum's crap right, and mum's suppression and all that stuff that's going on with mum. Does that make sense? And yeah. to love yourself. That's what she wants. Now, mum needs to deal with her stuff, right? That's up to her. She has free will. She's allowed to do whatever she wants. But because you live in her house, you now have to do what she wants. Yeah. If, you, if you're not in her house, now you can do what you want to a larger degree, which is the use of your will. And that's what you need if you're ever going to face these emotions. Yeah. Okay, thank that, you very much.